As you may have already heard, a British influencer named Ollie London has recently came out as transracial and now identifies as Korean. Hey guys, I just want to take this chance to, um, you know, come out today. Something that's been like on my mind for a long time and I've been very confused about how I identify. I've been very, very confused and you know, you don't understand if you're trapped in the wrong body your whole life, like you don't understand. I've been very trapped in my body. But I am going to come out today and say that I've been transitioning. I've been very unhappy with who I am deep down um, for the last eight years. And I've, you know, I've had like 18 plastic surgeries now. Um, and I'm feeling really good. I'm, for the first time in my life, I feel beautiful. You know, I'm looking in the mirror and I love the way I look and uh, feel happy. I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean. And I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I don't identify as British, so please don't... Um, referred to me any media or anyone online as British because I, I identify as Korean that's just my culture that's my home country that's exactly how I look now but despite the immense public support for people who's come out as different genders or identities or different sexual preferences Ollie coming out as Korean didn't go over so well with the vast majority of people on his coming out as Korean video the like to dislike ratio might have been the worst I've ever seen as of today his video has about 3,000 likes not too bad, but also has 44,000 dislikes, which is pretty bad. That's about a 6% like ratio, and I anticipate that it's going to keep getting lower over the next few weeks. Not to mention, a lot of Korean influencers weren't very happy about it either. Holly, if you're watching this, you can't be Korean because you're not. You don't have... Why do I have to explain this to you? You can't be Korean because you're not... Korean! You're, you're talking with a British accent, mate! Korean people love me. You, 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 you. Now, you may be wondering why someone like Demi Lovato or Bruce Jenner can come out as non-binary or transgender and receive the utmost praise and applause from culture, but when Ollie London came out as transracial, it was met with hate and disdain and the near virtual rejection from culture. After all, the lines of reasoning that Ollie used when coming out was nearly identical to the lines of reasoning used by Demi, Bruce, and the countless others who were given praise and support for coming out. So why was Ollie met with so much rejection and disdain? You are lying to me right now. Maybe you're lying to yourself. Either tell me the truth or shut up. To understand this, you have to be clear about what people mean today when they talk about their identity. Just so we're all on the same page, when people talk about their identity, they're usually talking about who they believe that they truly are, their most authentic selves. And in our society today, we're told that if you discover your true identity, and if you're able to freely express and live that identity out, then you'll finally be truly happy and fulfilled. So if you can understand this, then you can start to understand why people are so desperate today to have everyone else validate their personal identity and why they demand that you accept it and not reject it. The reason why is because they believe that a rejection of their personal identity not only means a rejection of the thing that will give them true happiness and freedom, but also it's rejection of who they ultimately are. So if you reject how people identify, then that person will feel like they can't be accepted by others for who they truly are. So now it might make more sense as to why the ex external appearance matters so much for people like Ollie. You know, I've had like 18 plastic surgeries now. It's a way to get others to realize who people like Ollie believe that they truly are, and it's also a way for them to feel accepted for what they believe is their most authentic selves. But with such a strong and important need to be accepted by others, also comes a fear of being rejected by others. This is why on the one hand, you see Ollie put himself out there and he makes himself vulnerable to hear what people have to say about it. But at the same time, he begs for people not to comment negatively about it. So I just want people to please be respectful in the comments. Please be respectful online. I don't want to receive any backlash for this because this is a very personal thing. That's because the things that you give the power to inform you about your value and your self-worth are the same things that have the power to rob you of your value and your self-worth. So now that we understand how important identity is to people today, now we can start to see why culture rejected Ollie's appeal to come out as transracial, but also accepted others who came out as transsexual. To put it simply, the reason why is because people don't typically find their personal identity in being straight. So culture sees it as non-threatening when people come out as gay, for example. A person coming out as gay or trans isn't understood in culture to be something that tramples on anyone else's identity. But when it comes to the race of a minority group, it's a different story since a lot of minorities do find their identity in their race and they are identified by their race. That's why Ollie coming out as Korean is seen as a threat to the personal identities of Korean 
Korean people. You can't be Korean because you're not. People understood Ollie to be infringing on the identity of a minority group and therefore denying others of their identity, which is understood today to be one of the worst things that you can possibly do. Now, I sympathize with people like Ollie who do have these sorts of identity issues, and I also sympathize with them because what's accepted today might be rejected a year from now, and if we're desperate to get others to recognize and affirm those identities, we'll always be putting ourselves at risk of being rejected by others, essentially making us insecure and vulnerable to what others think. Now, I don't think very many people realize just how important it is to find your identity in the right places, because getting our identity in the wrong places is also the cause for things like racism, for example. I think that this is such a critical thing for people to understand, and I talk about it in detail in this video. So go ahead and click on this video to see what I mean. But the next time that you find yourself finding your identity in all the wrong places, what are you going to say? What do you mean?